Hey guys, it's Code Lagomorph. This is another update video from my first commercial game entitled Over Comet. And now I would like to address in this video how to fix a certain issue I have encountered during the development process. Specifically, I'm referring to the Easter pathfinding system I have implemented in my game project in a while that I have learned through Mr. Joe free top-down shooter series tutorial in his YouTube channel. You can go there. His channel is full of valuable content about game development in Godot, so you may check it out later. And now, I'm going to open my previous milestone achievement number 6. So you can see the issue that I'm trying to point out that needs to be fixed. As I run the game, let's just put the player character here. And let's make him walk towards this target location here. Now as you notice, when he traced the path in reaching his destination, please note that the way he travels should be a diagonal locomotion. But if you focus more on the way he walks, it's so awkward and my, in my opinion, it's uncomfortable to look at because he walks so very clanky like a robot creating a pattern of a zigzag movement. And even the pieces in the game just like this one do the same way of path tracing. So how to make this better? Now before we fix that, let's go to the pathfinding script. And then here in the connect traversable tiles function, the code inside this function is the one that made that path tracing issue, which creates the zigzag movement pattern to all kinematic characters in the game. So to easily get rid of it, we can simply use another method of path tracing. As I will comment this line of code here, and rather I would prefer to use a method that can detect 8 surrounding vertices instead of detecting only 4 surrounding vertices in this function here. Now let's just add indention then I will also comment this line of code here. Now let's try to run. As you can notice, there is a big difference of the walking movement of the player character in the game, but there is a but. Do you catch that? That is the problem when we use this kind of path tracing method for it cuts the corners. Instead of going around corners, it passes through them. Um, now let's make these codes back to normal and proceed to the current update that address to fix this problem.
Now let me just run the game for you to see the fixed result. Now you can see it has a smooth diagonal locomotion without passing through corners anymore and also no more clunky weird movement. You know what? I'm impressed how it turns out. Though I admit that my solution is not an optimized solution, but I can say this is still a solution, right? Now how did I do that? As you can see here, I added new tile map. I called it anti-diagonal restriction. And I assigned this for a new group of nodes named anti-diagonal obstacles. And as we go to the pathfinding script, I created new unready variable called anti-diagonal tile to fetch the anti-diagonal restriction tile map to the code. And, and then now here in the connect reversible tiles function, as I said a while ago, I prefer to use the method that can detect eight surrounding vertices instead of detecting only four surrounding vertices for path tracing. So we can avoid the zigzag pattern of movement of every kinematic characters in the game to happen, but in order to prevent the cutting of corners or passing through corners, let's go to the update navigation map function. Let's find the specific codes for the restriction tile map. I'm right here. So this red colored tile I have created is for blocking purpose or act as a barrier preventing any kinematic characters to pass through when this tile stands on the way. I simply put this tile to every tree, bushes, and for buildings, of course. And now, mind you, I assigned group of nodes for the restriction tile called obstacles here. Here also is where I will auto-generate the anti-diagonal tile to surround every four corners of every restriction tile, which is the red colored tile. This line of codes here is the one that will fix the cutting of corners for static objects. And below are codes that specifically handles the cutting corners, avoidance of every kinematic characters in the game. When it comes near to the static objects having restriction tiles. Let me just expand the screen for a better vision for the codes. Here we should manually add in the conditions every tile so each kinematic character in the game. Now let me undo the expansion of the screen of the script and 
I will toggle on the visibility of the anti-diagonal restriction tile map. Notice it never appears right away in the edit mode, but only this restriction tile map for we auto-generate the anti-diagonal tiles during the run process of the game. Let me toggle on this one again so we can see the auto-tiling for the anti-diagonal tiles in the game. As you can see, the auto-tiling works well. It fills all static objects having restriction tiles on them. And now, why have I created these anti-diagonal tiles for? Simply because these anti-diagonal tiles are the one that will break the line of path in vertical or in horizontal manner and not in diagonal process, which causes the cutting of corners. And that process I'm talking about is happening here. Through this line of codes, we simply disconnect points in the vertices located in x negative 1, y negative 1, and then x positive 1, y negative 1, and then x negative 1, y positive 1, and lastly positive oh, x positive 1, then y positive 1. Now, let's toggle on again the anti diagonal restriction visibility on. And then in player node, let's put check this should draw path line to on also. Then let's test. As you can see, whenever the player character stands on an anti diagonal tile, it bends its path line 90 degree only. So in that way, it prevents the cutting of corners. And see that? You can see the same way for every NPC in the game. It avoids to pass through the corners of the restriction tile. And also at the same time, you can notice there is no more clunky movements, no more consistent zigzag thing of locomotion happening in the game. Now the case is solved for the kinematic object to static object vertices connection. But note this, when it comes to kinematic object to kinematic object, uh, we need also, we need to prevent cutting of corners. So when there are two or more kinematic characters crossing paths, there will be no passing through or overlapping to each body of the characters in the game. So for that, we just simply generate auto tile for anti-diagonal restriction to each kinematic character in the game when they come close to each other. Just remember that. Now, how do I auto tile anti-diagonal tile for the player? Um, notice these two line of codes here. When I set cell, inside the parentheses, the last index, I put negative 1. Means it will clear the cell or the tile during runtime. Now as I run the game, the anti-diagonal for kinematic objects will only appear when they are close to each other. Like this and it will disappear when they are not close to each other. In that case, we set the cell to negative 1 to remove the anti-diagonal tile. Now we can see also that they never pass through to each other or overlap to each other. Now everything is in good condition now. Now again, negative 1 is for clearing cell or tile, and while for adding a cell or tile, we put 0 index for it instead of negative 1.
And by the way, we must not forget to declare these vector variables for every kinematic character we had in the game. And let's go back again in the player obstacle for loop. Now in this last condition here, in this else statement, in this line of codes here, is we try to connect again the vertices that has been disconnected during the crossing path of kinematic characters to each other. By simply doing the star that connect points, all vertices mentioned in the for loop of the point we can instantly retrieve to connect. And we do the same thing for the obstacle of every NPC in the game. Like this one here for Dan. And here for Judith. Now I guess all things are settled now, we may now unhide this tile map back again, and also this one, and in the player node, let's uncheck this one, and the house tree let us also unhide, then let's run. All is well, nice. Now before I end this video, back to the pathfinding script. In the add traversable tiles function, here when we add point, If I remove this digit and run the game, there's something weird that is happening to all kinematic character in the game. For example, as I place the player character in this location, then I want him to go to this target location, please notice his movement. You see it there? It creates a glitch effect to the animation, right? So what I'm trying to point out here is, it is necessary to always put a digit greater than 1 for the weight scale in adding point. Now let's run again the game. We can see now the difference and the glitch effect was no longer there anymore. Rather, the player character diverts his path direction in a new way by the effect that we added weight scale greater than 1 in the code. Now, I would like to remove this one again. 
And in the player node, let's check that should draw tile again to on. So we can see what really happened behind the glitch effect or what causes it. Now please focus your eyes in this part of the path line here. Again. You see, the reason behind the glitch effect is caused by the sudden change of path of the player character. That is why the path line reacts with a sudden back and forth bend of the line. Now as we put again 5 weight scale here. Um, wait, am I right to what I'm saying? I'll check. Ah yeah, it was right. Um, now let's run the game. See if the Rev's new path avoiding the glitch effect to happen. That was my game up solution and for the last test run, let's uncheck this one then run for the last time. That's it for this video. I hope you will find this solution helpful and you may use it freely and do some improvements. So goodbye for now. See you in my next video. Thank you.